Okay, you guys, what is up? The King of Lightning is here today to do Magi on a Monday. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We're going to do Magi Chapter 230 Review on a Monday. When was the last time the King of Lightning, me, did a Magi Chapter Review on a Monday? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But fuck it. We in. We nigga. All right. So, that being said. That being said. Let me just dive right in. First thing off the gate. When it came to the initial read of the chapter, honestly, the chapter seemed chaotic. It did. And it took... And there's still one scene that I fully don't comprehend what exactly happened. And I'll get to it real soon. But automatic, when it came to this chapter, the pacing could have been a lot cleaner. It could have been a lot more organized. And the melding of the dialogue and the action and the skipping of scenes and not showing enough scenes in between scenes, yeah, that could have been a lot, lot, lot better. That's number one. Number two. Is that I was really hoping for this fight to last like two or three chapters. Not one chapter. It was one chapter. It's Elder David and the other elders of the Orthodox Church versus the leaders of the resistance. Solomon and his boys. And it lasts one chapter. Now granted, I suppose you can make the argument that okay fine. So they're elders and they're old and they'd already used the divine staves against Seta and the people in the main camp even though it was a one-sided massacre and how you had Solomon, they were in this barrier where they couldn't use their magic therefore they had more power or they had more stamina but whatever. Like the point here is that this is Elder David. This is like your end all be all dude. And what really disappointed me was the fact that nothing they did really was like, like, no. There was no awe, there was no impact on what they did from a combat standpoint. And I was hoping to see a lot more from Elder David, even from Solomon, to be quite honest. I was hoping for a lot more sustenance when it came to the combat itself. And... Let me get more to the specifics here. Let me start with the action. Why not? Fuck it. And then we'll go to the dialogue. Because the dialogue is fairly important. Obviously. They can't even mourn the depths of setup and test. No, not enough time. Because apparently Elder David's already going over back to the area where he came from. To take out their remaining resistance. Yeah, to take out their remaining resistance. And... The moment they get close enough, Elder David, they get cut off. They get cut off by Solomon and his gang the moment these guys get close. So they clearly skipped a few scenes or a few panels or they skipped or they went ahead in time where he's already going there and apparently Solomon and his guys were fast enough with their divine staffs to catch up to Elder David and the other elders with their divine staffs. So they just skip that. And then combat ensues for like one panel involving like mainly Sheba. We get to see her and her and her board control. And then we just see stuff flying everywhere. Again, it could have been a lot cleaner. It's just a whole mess of stuff flying everywhere. And then we focus specifically on Isnan, Wahid, and Falon after dialogue from dialogue and flashback from Elder David, where Elder David pretty much mentions the fact that he was the one who personally took care <coughs> who personally took care of Seta. Him. And of course Isnan hears that shit. I'm gonna fucking kill you. And this is where the most confusing scene occurs. We have Isnan. 
he rains down like lightning bolts or thunderbolts of some kind. And they either bounce off of his board, Elder, Elder David's board, or they just get deflected by some other means. Then we have him defend against Wahid's fire attack. And then comes Falon. And she's coming there with some mass of Managoy energy, some puppeteering type skill. I'm not sure what it is exactly. And what happens is that I think she's coming from behind Elder David or to the side of Elder David. Either way, the point here is that Elder David, what he does next is just confusing. Because he goes like this with his, with, with his divine staff. Then he just slams it back. And there's like some energy ball that's created. It flies for a few kilometers and explodes in the distance. Like this nuke-like explosion. And then apparently it hits or it affects Wahid, Falon, and Isnan. And I'm sitting here like, wait, what the fuck just happened in this scene? I'm trying to decipher this one scene and I can't do it. Because I'm like, wait a second. Weren't Isnan and Wahid in front of Elder David? And she came from the side. And the way when I first read it, it seemed as if like he had deflected her attack off to the distance. And the reason why they were coughing up blood was because they had used a lot of Magoi in their final or in their mega attacks. But... The point here is that when you go back to the scene, we don't see any deflection of attack. So, I'm sitting here like, what happened? Either, because now I'm thinking that Elder David, when he did that energy ball of Magoy, Wahid, Isnan, and Falon were in that ball of energy and it exploded in the distance and then they took the brunt of the explosion so or he just did it and they're in the vicinity but we saw but we saw her rushing him so there's no way that they were in the vicinity that far away when we had just seen her rush elder david so that scene to me is confusing because it's not specific, it's not clear, it's not clean when it comes to its portrayal of what actually happened. So that's one of the main reasons why when it came to the pacing, I'm not a fan of it in this chapter. Because the pacing, like the structure isn't clean at all in a lot of scenes. I'm, I'm just saying, from my perspective, it's not clean. Has to go in the laundry room. Now... <laughs> After that, we just had like this cross counter attack between Solomon and Elder David. He winds up altering the attack to where it hits some of the elders, and then the rest of the elders go on some electrode Voltorb type shit, suicide, self destructions. But they get sent up to the outer atmosphere layers of the planet by Solomon. They're coming back down with their divine staffs, and he meets them halfway. So they can't go any further, so their self-destruct won't affect the guys on the ground. And then it ends off after some dialogue with like some weird hug out between father and son. And then there's an exchange where in the explosion, there happens to be a Borg around Solomon, but not around Elder David. Almost as if like Elder David put the Borg around his son. And then, like when he hugged him apparently, or something like that, I don't know. And then... He gave the divine staff that he had to his son, saying that it was the key. So, the action, I think, definitely left me wanting a lot, 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 lot more. From not only just a standpoint of what they could do, the elders, the other elders, like the ones that we never saw who got wiped out almost instantly. And then, from just a length standpoint, because it was too short... And it wasn't clean to begin with. So yeah, the action wanted me, it, it left me wanting a lot more. Now when it came to 
the exposition, it's fascinating. First of all, a lot talk about God, obviously. Uh, obviously. And it was supposed to be, like, the way they hinted this whole thing to end off. As if, like, they were going to do some certain magical combo skill, and they were going to wind up killing God together. That's the way it was hinted at a few chapters ago. And apparently, that's not how it went out. All he does is he gives his son his divine staff. And he mentions that you cannot foresee your own destiny. And when the other magicians find out about their destiny, they'll probably be in despair. Which hints at Dark Rook, Black Rook stuff. But maybe one day in the future, there'll be humans who can change, who can fight against their destiny. And this is also mentioned right before they have their hug out moment. Where you have Solomon and he and Elder David are like in like, they're in like this white embrace, if you would, before they hug out. And he's questioning, why is it him? Why is it you, father? And then Elder David responds, it's destiny. That's just the way it is. And he explains how all the things that occur, the loss of life and the and the irrational unhappiness and all that stuff, it's just a part of destiny. It's just a part of this grand scheme that God has laid out, which he can see these laid out paths. And we have Solomon wonder. So you gain the power of foresight by being in the good graces of God. Because Solomon, we've seen throughout the entirety of this arc so far, Solomon doesn't really give a fuck about God. In fact, he questions the living shit out of God. He's not in the good graces of God. That's very obvious. And for good reason, too, mind you. But here with Elder David, he's like, God, well, actually, now you mention it, it is time for me to go back to God. So he knows he's going to die. And then he has that farewell, my son, even though I never really considered, even though I never really considered you to, to be my son. And then hug out. Yeah. Tosan! Tosan! Or I, I think that's father in Japanese. I don't know. Whatever. And then explosion. Borg around Solomon, which I think, again, is placed there by Elder David. And then he dies in the explosion and, he, and Solomon is saved. So, and then like, there were a few bits of dialogue here and there when it concerned the guys on the ground about how the magicians saving you guys goes against God's will and it was a great sin and whatever. Not really a big, big deal because we've heard that kind of uh, speech before. But the point here, I think, is this. It looks like... Solomon is going to be able to see the paths of destiny now that he has his father's staff. And he's going to have a complete understanding of what happens to the world and what happens to uh, a, a whole host of stuff. And I don't know where Eli is going to fit in this specifically. Obviously, at some point, Eli is. I just don't know how. I thought that Eli was going to be a key factor now. Like, now. But no, apparently not. Apparently, Eli is for later. Right now, here's my divine staff. I'm going to go bye-bye and go up with Eli. So, again, like, my thing here is that Eli is, like, the grand catalyst. And mind you, also, when he talks about destiny, when Elder David speaks about how what's happening now when it pertains to the deaths of your friend's son's when it pertains to Seta's death. Note how in that, and again, small things that you had to catch like the third time reading it. In that panel, you see White Rook flying around in like the corner of that panel. As if to, as if to emphasize that the paths of destiny are the Rooks themselves. Because we do know that the White Rook is progression and the dark rook is regression. So in the sense of destiny, 
all Elder David's really doing is reading the paths of the Rook themselves that Eli himself had that Eli is getting his magoy drained by. So like again, like there's supposed to be a lot more that pertains to Elder David when it comes to him and him being the key reason why Eli's losing so much magoy. So again, like Honest to God, I'm hoping that we get a lot more intel when it pertains to his divine staff and what's going on there and how the emblem on like the top middle of the of the divine staff is like the jinn emblem that we see all the time for the king vessel metal vessel users. So again, I'm just waiting because this chapter, not only from a combat and fighting standpoint but also from a exposition and honestly from a story progression standpoint i really was hoping to get more i really really was so overall the chapter i think is okay okay plus because it really should have been a great chapter it really should have been like a yo or an amazing chapter but it didn't live up to the hype that it had for the entire of this arc so far. And that's the honest God truth. When you have a side chapter for Elder David, you expect a lot more. When you have hype of destroying Eli and the Rook and him being the reason why the Rook are absorbing Magoy from Eli itself and Eli losing all the Magoy so it's going to wind up destroying the world, you expect a lot more. You really do. But this chapter, yeah, I want a lot more, didn't get it. Okay, plus chapter, Magi, and those are my thoughts, so I'm done. King Landing, I will see you guys later. Rate the video, comment, and subscribe as always. Peace, have a nice day.